What makes a movie successful? Which movie genres performs best at the box office? If this sounds like fun, then keep on watching because in this video, you're going to learn how to create your very own web application that allows you to explore a movie data set. And without further ado, let's dive in. Let's have a look at what the app will allow you to do. So the web app here will allow you to use pandas for performing data wrangling, Altair for displaying the charts, and also we're gonna use the editable data frame so that we could make live edits to the data frame, which will then be reflected in the data frame here and also in the resulting chart. Using this app is very easy. You can make a selection for the genre and also the year duration using the multi-select box here and also the slider widget. And as you do so, you're going to notice that the underlying data frame and also the chart will be updated. So if I take away her, it will be gone here from the chart and also from the data frame. If I take away drama, it will also be deleted from both the tables and the charts. So let's have a look at the code repository. So this is the movie explorer repository that will allow you to create the interactive data explorer app. So firstly, let's have a look at the data. So the data here is taken from the TMDB 5000 data set and the prepared data is provided in this repository. The tech stack that we're using is actually Streamlit and also let's add Pandas and Altair. So the readme.md file here describes what this particular repo is all about. And it provides you the link to the demo app here and also the GitHub code spaces so that you could reproduce this environment on the cloud. And also a link to the TMDB 5000 movie dataset, which is hosted on Kaggle. More description on the data is provided here. And if you would like to do a deeper dive into this data set, you could do so in this particular link. Let's have a look at the app. So the app is in the file called streamletapp.py. And so the entirety of the application here is only 53 lines of code. And you're going to see here that we heavily provided inline comments so that you could know which of the various code blocks are doing. And so let me provide a code by code block explanation along with a view of the app side by side. All right, and so the first five lines of code here will allow you to import Streamlit as ST. And Streamlit is the web app framework that we're using, and it allows you to build web applications using pure Python. We're also going to import NumPy as NP, and NumPy allows you to do numerical processing. We're importing Pandas as PD, which allows you to do data wrangling, importing data frame as well. And finally, we're importing Altair as ALT, which we'll be using to display the line chart here. Lines eight through nine will essentially allow us to name the application as Interactive Data Explorer, which is provided right here. And the browser title and also the page icon is specified using the emoji of the chart, which will be displayed here. And sc.title is the same thing, Interactive Data Explorer, along with the emoji, which will be displayed here at the top of the app. Lines. 12 until 16 will essentially be a expander box. So we're encapsulating sc.expander using the width statement. And then upon clicking on the about this app, which is right here, the user will be able to see the underlying description of the app. So the title, what can this app do? And also how to use the app is written using markdown and we're using the double asterisk in order to make the text bold. We're using st.info so that we get a blue box here. And then we're using st.warning so that we also get a yellow box as well. So this helps to beautify the aesthetic of the descriptive text here. Line number 19 will provide the question header of which movie genre performs best at the box office. Let's have a look further. Lines 22 and 23. We're essentially loading the data set here, movies genre summary.csv into the DF variable. Then we're going to assign the year column to have a format of integer. 
lines 26 and 27, we're going to take the unique values of the genre column, and then we're going to put it into the genre list so that we get a list of the genres in the data set. Then we're going to create the multi-select box, which is a dropdown, as you can see here. If you click on it, it's a dropdown, and then you could select the various genre of your interest. And this is using the sc.multiselect. And the genre list here is passed as the input argument. And then the default selection are provided here. Action, adventure, biography. And then below this is the year selection. And from the year column, we're going to take the unique values, assigning it to the year list variable. Then we're going to create a slider widget, which is right here, which is a range slider widget, meaning that you could select the beginning year and the ending year. And then the data set here will be updated accordingly. And we're using the sd.slider widget. Then we're going to use NumPy in order to create a range of values and then assigning it to the year selection list. Lines 35 until 37, we're essentially going to subset the data, whereby we're filtering the data frame based on the selections of the genres and the year. Then we're going to reshape the data and then we're going to sort it by the year. And then we're going to take this reshaped data frame and then putting it into the st.data editor, which is the data frame that you see here, and also a editable data frame. You could actually make edits to the data frame here. Let's say if 2014, I make it 2015, then data will be reflected. Let me change it. You could even change the numbers in here as well. And then the number will be updated as shown here. On line number 45, we're going to take the values from the editable data frame here, and then we're going to prepare it in a format that will be suitable for further chart making, which will then be performed on lines number 48 until 53, where we're going to use the Altair chart method and then assigning the DF chart data frame, which we have prepared in line 45, and then we're creating the line charts. On the X axis, we have the year. On the Y axis, we have the earnings. Then we're coloring it by the genre. We're making the height 320 pixels. Then we're going to display this chart, which is assigned to the chart variable using the st.altair chart method of Stringlet. And then we're saying that we want the width of the chart to be true, which means that it will expand to the entirety of the width of the browser. And all of this in 53 lines of code and you could feel free to modify the app to your own liking. You could replace the data frame that you're going to read in with another data set. And then you could explore the data using your modified version of the interactive data explorer. Let me know in the comments section down below what other Streamlit apps that you would like to see me build. And if you're finding great value in this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on notification, and as always, happy Streamlitting. Let me know in the comment section down below what other Streamlit apps that you want to see me build. Support the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, and as always, happy Streamlitting.